So welcome to this episode of The Rumble. My guest today is, is definitely uh, not the usual type, but she's extremely young to start with. I never hardly ever speak to college kids, but she's still in college or just about finished. Oh yeah, she's completed college. Her name is uh, Akshay. So welcome to the show, Akshay. Thank you, Agar. I Let me just ask you straight away. Do you see any difference between the Indian, uh, the, the average collegiate you meet, if you meet any of them when you're on vacation? Do you see them any different from all of you who pass out from the US? Um, yeah, I just f feel like everyone here is a lot younger and maybe a little bit less mature also than what I see back there. Everyone there, I guess you have a lot of opportunities and you do internships and you're, by the time you graduate college, you've worked at least on average three, four jobs sometimes. Oh, is that true for almost anyone? Yeah, or that I've grown up with in, in yeah. the UC system in general. I think you've you've worked internships and summer jobs, you're working while you're taking classes. So that's usually the stereotype. But what's the age you finish school at? 22. You finish school at 22? Yeah. Uh, I mean, am I talking about school in the way school is used in India as in, 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 the, in the lower class and then university okay. is... Uh, the oh, so we consider school yeah, until school graduate college. Yeah, until you yeah. graduate uh, for undergrad. Yeah, so you graduate so, undergrad at 22. But isn't there a difference between schooling and, and, and the, college, the, the, the college life? Um, or I isn't think, there any? I don't think there is that much because everyone... I, mostly everyone I know goes to a four-year university or two-year university and then goes transfers to a... But I thought it was a very rare thing going into colleges in America. Most people just end up working after they finish their school. Not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. And not, not true. Not true. Oh, so everybody goes to college and gets a degree. Yeah, mostly everyone. Or even, I guess, maybe it's where I've grown up to. Mostly everyone in high school goes to college. Okay, but you, you, kind of... you grew up in, in the valley, Silicon yes, Valley. I oh, did. yeah, Silicon Valley is another universe. <laughs> I mean, everybody is educated is. and, you know, yeah. the home of startups and whatever. Mm -hmm. But the average American kid, I see, like on television, they're manning the gas pump or something like that. They all go through colleges? Um, maybe Maybe not. Maybe not everyone. Is it an expensive business going to college? Yes, it is. And more so now it's becoming more and more expensive as more people go. And okay, just off the top, just tell me, what would it cost to, get, to finish four years in, in an average college? You go home for, uh, at the end of the day's uh, class, let's say, you know, to the hustle. Um, any, uh, any idea? Yeah, you probably do. Yeah, it's, it's roughly, I would say, $30,000 each year. Each year? Yeah. $30,000. So, All right, um, that's four years of that. Four years of that. So let's say round it off to $150,000. Yep. That Six times that, uh, nine, 90 lakhs. Oh, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. Just compared by Indian terms, it is a hell of a lot. Yeah, for a four-year university. But that's yes. why a lot of people now are choosing to do a two-year community college, something local, stay at home, because community school is a little bit less expensive. Okay. And then transfer for the last two years. Um, that, that's allowed. Yep, that's allowed. That's allowed. Can you move interstate? Yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, these are the problems that we have uh, in our country. I mm -hmm. think it's extremely difficult to even shift from one university to another university. Mm -hmm. So if you were you were in, in UC, whatever. UC Davis, yeah. UC Davis, mm -hmm. right. So if you want to move to some other state, uh, you would have to shift uh, mm -hmm. your university. Yeah. Would that be possible? Yes, it's possible. Just transferring units and everything. Simple thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not a, it's not a huge task. Not usually, no. If the, if the classes that you want there are offered and if they take the curriculum that you've already taken and transfer things over it's usually not so, that difficult so moving across the united states uh, into different colleges is no big deal mm -mm. Uh, here they make it into a huge they make thing. it into yeah so i I'm, I'm intrigued by what you said about people being a little less mature here i, I agree with you but i mm -hmm. never knew the reason is because you people work in between so you tend to take up jobs yeah we take up jobs while we're in school still and Everyone, but does that mean you stop school and then take the job? No, you're working alongside school. So ever, since I started freshman year, I was always so working. So to take your so. case, for example, when mm -hmm. did you first start working? Um, freshman year of college. Okay. Yeah, so, so I'm 18 in, in, in years old. In the regular school time, you didn't work? No. 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 So at what, at what age were you there when you went to freshman you became a freshman? Freshman in college at 18. At 18. Mm -hmm. So at 18, you took, uh, what was the subject you took? So I'm, I did managerial economics. It's like the business major. Okay, so, uh, so you started working? I started uh, working um, after a couple months of joining school once I got accustomed to... What was the job? Um, just working in the library as an assistant. Oh, within your own college? Within my own college. Okay, and yeah. do they offer you uh, money, salary and all that for it? So or is you can it just... either get money or you can um, get it comped. Like it's a work-study program where the salary that you get counts towards your tuition. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, it's not mandatory that they must give you no. a job? Um, no, no, no. It's no. not mandatory. So you have to you find the opportunity if you want to work. Okay. So yeah. how did you find it? Um, just on the campus website, they have uh, student opportunities. Okay. Just went there and um, But is applied. it common to see everybody looking yeah. around for jobs? Mm -hmm. It's do. very common. Yeah? Yeah. So there is opportunity for... And uh, probably the number of students are also much less than... 
Uh, how many like did you have in your class? In oh, in my graduating class? Yeah, yeah. Um, in your freshman year, what? How many were there with you? Probably, I, I would say like six thousand. Six thousand. Yeah, that, that, that was huge that, university. Okay, that so, was all the courses and everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, all years and mm-hmm. all subjects put together would be around six thousand students, or is only just your? I would just my class. Yes. Just my fr- all the freshmen, I would say roughly six ballpark six thousand. Okay, so that means four times that would be the number of students at any given time. So you're talking about yeah. 25,000. Yeah, I yeah? think so. I mean, that's easy uh, multiplication so. of numbers. I yeah. remember that's correct. Yeah. Okay, so what what did you do actually? You When you say I helped out in uh, in the library. Yeah, just checking out books and I don't know. So is that is that actual uh, uh, a job which would have to be done by someone if you hadn't taken it? Would yeah. they have posted somebody on that job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have posted someone, but they, they know that students look for these kind of opportunities, just simple things where if there's free time, you can finish your homework, you can study for exams. Okay. So freshman year, some people always look for that or working at a sandwich shop or anything on campus because you're okay. close by, you're living on campus in the dorms or the hostels. So a lot of students look for those kind of opportunities. All right, so you heard it from her. I, mean, I think there's fundamental differences. Our students have no clue. They're living in some cloud. Mama and Papa will keep sending checks out there, but here they are going working in the first year. When you come back and let's find out how, what else is really strikingly different from our systems. So I was intrigued by what you said about the maturity of our students. Mm-hmm. It's a fact that out here, most uh, students go through college sitting at home. Mm-hmm. They go out from home, they're picked up and dropped by the, the moms and the dads, mm-hmm. you know. So you said you worked in, in the library and then you you had to take on something else after that. What yeah, was that? I worked um, in a finance role at the state government, at the state controller's office, and then I worked in That was in your hometown or where this university was? It was where the, the university colleges. was, yeah. In Davis? In Yeah, very close to Davis, okay. in another city. And then I worked another finance job at So that. when you went to do that job, did you leave your uh, education uh, stopped and you went and took the job up or you're doing it no. parallelly? No. So they are, like for students who work alongside with, while well, doing school, they, they give you your hours according to your schedule. So if your classes are, okay, I have three classes in the morning and then one in the evening, then they'll, they'll recognize that gap and they'll give you... Um, Okay, yeah. so they, they take all that into consideration. They, yeah, yeah. Um, especially what? for students, they're very accommodating. Okay, yeah. okay. So you did that uh, for a while in the, mm-hmm. in the state government office. Mm-hmm. And what, what were you doing there? Just finance billing and um, scheduling meetings. All right, so that's, yeah. that's a job that, let's say, in, in this country, in India, mm-hmm. would be done by a full-time employee. The scheduling and billing. You're not going right, to give it right. to just any old guy who walks in off the street. Yeah, not yeah. in India anyway. Mm-hmm. But there they allowed you to do that. Yeah. But I mean, they also recognize that there's going to be errors if you're a student or if you're an intern. So there's always someone who's going to check all okay, your work and okay. make sure everything is right. All right. Yeah. So it's not the, the supervising yeah, yeah, staff yeah, yeah. also super- available. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you moved on somewhere else. Yeah. Then I worked in a finance position at the UC Davis Medical Center. Okay. Same type of thing. Um, billing. billing. Yeah. So you understand really office functioning? Uh, did you have to have draft your own letters? And did you did you? Yeah, do all emails, that? sending emails. I think it's mainly to teach students um, prioritizing their time with studies because that's a huge thing. If you're working 20 hours a week and you're taking classes for 30 hours a week, that that itself, like okay. managing homework, and if you're captain of a dance team, if you're doing all this extra stuff, so how to build all that into to, your days? Mm-hmm, how to organize your time, time management, and okay. And then uh, and then what do you do? do you, uh, and this is all going on while you were a freshman or a, this is like. Like during freshman, this, sophomore, junior year. Okay. Yeah. In those years, you were doing all this. Mm-hmm. And did yeah. you have to go out of town? Did you leave your university town and go to some other? Yeah. So I actually did a, a quarter abroad at in D.C., in the capital. And okay. so there I did, for four months, I stayed there and did an internship at the Federal Reserve in D.C. and then took classes. That's with Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke. Wow. I met him. Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. shook his hands? I shook his hand. Yeah, I must remember to shake your hands after this. And say, I shook the hand that shook Ben Bernanke. Yeah. I'm never, sh- I'm not, not watching this hand anymore. You're not anymore. watching anymore. Okay. Well, yeah, that would have been fascinating to go work in, uh, in, in, in something as yeah. uh, you know, so important to the world mm-hmm. itself as the, as the Fed. Yep. And uh, did you get to meet people or was it just, you just run around, go get me a glass of water or was it no, serious no. stuff? No, you get to meet people. I was in the White House a couple times, so yes. never met the president or anything. But okay. yeah, just being there, like going to these meetings, it's yeah. pretty So I guess they, they, they sort of prepared you for uh, for the real world. Mm-hmm. Yep. Take a real job. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So I think that is probably the difference between... Uh, yeah, I think it's the, it's the working and it's also the... 
the living alone and doing everything by yourself, I think that really helps. So when you, when you live alone, what does it mean? I mean, you mean looking, looking for places to stay or? Like living alone, like for college, everyone there lives in the dorm. So you're not living at home with your parents. Yes. So being there, doing your own laundry, cooking by yourself, like managing your own finances. Are you cooking in your own rooms? Yeah, cooking in your Start own apartment. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, well. you're given a kitchen and stuff for your sophomore year. It's okay. only freshman year where they provide you with food. Um, okay. So after that, everything that you do is on your own. And you have uh, independent accommodation or you share it with somebody? How does Usually, it work? You, can do, you can do anything. I had a roommate um, okay. both all, all years of college. So, so that sort of prepares you for... Yeah, it prepares you for, for when you move out of the house because now I'm living in San Francisco and I've already lived alone four years when I was in school. So now I'm able to cook by myself, able to do my own laundry, clean everything. Okay, so you can, you can handle, uh, you can handle yeah. a job, full-time mm-hmm. job also. Mm-hmm. I mean... That, that's probably what the difference is here. Mm-hmm. Here in India, they say that, we are, uh, like I mentioned, we produce unemployable graduates. Unemployable because they've never done anything in their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, never even applied for anything, a job mm-hmm. or even, maybe they fill up a railway application for some mm-hmm. ticket or something. Even that, yeah. I'm sure they'll mess it up. They'll probably put the wrong, they'll come. Some guy, <laughs> I've seen it happening all the time. I have a railway recruitment board mm-hmm. office right in front of my house. Mm-hmm. And most days when I come down, there'll be four or five of them will walk up to me and say, sir, 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 can you help us fill this form? I said, what is this form for? To apply for a job. I said, to apply for a job, you want me to help me fill it up? <laughs> this, this is the way it is. Yeah. And do you see the difference in, in, in the way people talk, anything like that out here, the students out here, you feel they're... Still, um, well, I haven't met too many people aside from who I see in Pati's dance class who are my age. So I guess the people that I interact with are also very limited. So what I do see is sometimes maybe not the entire population. I can't generalize for everything. Mm. But. And out there, uh, your uh, your friends, if I would call them that, yeah, are they mostly ethnic Indians or uh, uh, or you have a lot of white friends? Yeah, I have a, a wide mix. So my yeah. dance friends, since I was captain of the dance team, all my dance friends are Indian or majority of them oh, are Indian. Oh, those Indian dance you're doing there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, they have that too. They have they have everything. It's a huge scene, in, within not just in California, but within the U.S. What? Dancing? Um, dan- dan- like dance teams Dancing, and intercollegiate uh, competitions. Okay, So okay. I was part of like the Bollywood fusion dance team. Oh, that, yeah, that seems to have uh, taken, taken ev- yeah. everyone by storm. Mm-hmm. But uh, do non-Indians also take to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, love it. They yeah. love watching it. They love participating in it. All the schools have at least a couple non-Indian members. So, so what's it that fascinates them? Do you ever talk to them and say, hey, what it makes you come into a Bollywood dance team? <laughs> I think it's just the the music, the energy, the colors. Yeah, yeah. they don't necessarily have to understand. I guess that's yeah. not important. Yeah. But you did uh, classical dance too, mm-hmm. because your mother is a. Yeah, my mother is a dance teacher, and my pati is a dance teacher. So my that, mommy is a dance teacher. That, that, that just sort of uh, leaks into your life without you realizing. Do you yeah. dance everywhere? Yeah, dance everywhere. So you actually completed a course. Uh, what is it? Have you done your mm-hmm. I did my Arangetrum in two thousand four. Where? In in the Bay Area. Okay. In San Jose. And there's a large enough crowd to come and see this? Oh, yeah. You'll have at least five or six Iron Gate gyms going on every weekend of yeah? the year. Every single okay, weekend. Okay, how about people to watch them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there always a full crowd. There's so many people coming to watch. And this, this is, I think most dancers from India should move across the US because there's hardly <laughs> anybody here watching it. And she says she's got, you know, any number of people to come and watch it. So we'll find out a little more from her as we come back. So uh, you, when you did, you, you, you learned dancing, right? you're, as I said, you're, and you, as you told me, your entire family is into... Uh, Dance and the arts in general, yeah. Okay. Mother, aunt, who else? Who else? Mother, Pati, my aunt, okay. my Chiti is a music teacher in the Bay Area. Okay, so, they all, they're all out there. Um, well, my mommy is just moved back to India from Dubai, so she's okay. teaching here, okay. but, and Pati's here, but my mom and my aunt are both... So when you do your Arangetram, isn't that a tough proposition out there or is it just the same as doing it here in Madras? Um, it's, I mean, it's the same difficulty. You need the orchestra, you need to book the theatre. So where do all company. those people live there? there? There are people who blowing, I um, mean, are playing the instruments and... Uh, they all live in and around the yeah. Bay Area. Yeah. There are enough of them to yeah, take yeah. care of all the... Uh, the demand, uh, yeah. yeah. There's so many of them. Yeah. And I think it's just like here. I think of the Bay Area as just a l- smaller version of what's here. Okay, yeah. and so you managed to go through the whole thing out there. You didn't have to come here and learn anything. No, no. And it's not it's not necessary in any case to come over here and do yarring it. It's just no, a, no, no. Just the yeah. same out there. Same. Th- so is it an expensive process? Yeah, it's a very expensive process. The theater, same same as here. You have to book the theater and 
book all the musicians, time, rehearsals. Okay, so only a seriously dedicated person will be able to go through that. Yeah, but I think there it's kind of become a thing, or at least with Amma students and with other dance teacher students, I see that after learning for 10, 12 years, they think it's it's kind of like they look forward to it as a graduation. After this many years, I want to show everyone that this is what I've been but doing. But isn't, is isn't that what Arangetra is supposed to do? No. Arangetra, no, is actually the very first time you're on stage, is what it's actually supposed to be. It's the okay. first time you're performing as a soloist on stage for two hours, memorizing all these pieces. Okay. But to some students there, they think of it as a graduation. I've been learning. So like I'm that. done with it now. I've, I've yeah. got myself a degree not in just, dance. Yeah. <laughs> not done with it in the sense that they'll never yeah, continue, know, but done in the sense that here's what I've done for 10 years. Here's what I have to show you. And does it take that long? Um, mm, yeah, like I think it takes... Like if you didn't go through college and all, do all the rest of it and you went uh, shoved straight into a dance school, would it take you 10 years? To learn to, it? Well, to get to the level when you can do it. I don't think so. Well, considering that usually classes are only once a week. Mm. And then you don't have classes in the summer because everyone takes vacation. Okay. And you're learning with, I don't know, eight to ten other kids. I yeah. think it, that also slows down the process. But you're doing shows and stuff. It's not like you've never been on stage before. You have multiple shows before, but it's probably one of the first times you're performing a full-length recital as a soloist okay. in front of such a large audience. And so every girl goes through it. Girl and guy who learns uh, dance. Not every girl. Every girl who's interested and wants no, to. No, what I mean, I mean, those who have taken up dance seriously, mm -hmm. they have to do this arangetum. They don't have to. If they want to, they yeah. If they so, want to, so do it's a not thing. a classification. I mean, it's not a prerequisite to say I'm a dancer because I've done that. No, 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 no. You still go ahead and uh, you can even, still yeah. Still teach mm -hmm. even if you haven't done it yourself. Yeah, uh, you can, but you won't really see that. You happen. won't do that. Yeah, you, you won't, won't see that. Usually. Okay, so uh, the performance areas out there are they also Indian kind of community halls? So where do you go mm -hmm. and do it? Are they... Any any theater? There's a bunch of like every school or every college has a huge theater that where they do their shows. So usually okay. our performances are also in those kind of venues. So they let it out. Any other they went to any other communities? When I say communities, I mean other nationality uh, immigrants or otherwise who also do things like this, dance, um, showcase their children. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think there's, like, I know it gets rented out for Chinese New Year, for example. They'll have okay. a huge celebration, parades everywhere, and then they'll rent out a theater and have a big show. I mean, I mean um, I'm talking about a solo performance. Do they do that also, like Indian dance kids? I mean, um, kids? I'm Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I'm not sure, yeah. Any other nationalities? Like the Mexicans doing something of their own? Um, I know they have a more uh, coming of age type of quinceanera type of thing okay. where they'll have a huge um, more like, party time more more a party type but it's also you have to show a talent also okay play the guitar dance. yeah mm -hmm. okay something like that so, but I'm not aware of but and do communities from different na nationalities they all come together for this like how popular is the, the dance uh, among non-Indians what, um, what you learned do you see the anyone else coming in Coming in to learn. to learn by the team, you're yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, not that many non-Indians that that my mom teaches or that I'm aware of. Uh, is, is there any reason for that? Um, it might be linked to maybe like Hinduism, since all our stories are more towards like representing different stories in the Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, and stuff. That's and they're not really aware if they're learning in the church. No, but I thought for a girl, just mm -hmm. the dance form itself might might attract them, regardless of what the. Yeah, but you don't yeah. have anybody, uh, any any white girl, Mexican girl, uh, <laughs> black no, girl. No, uh, not, no, not doing Indian classical that I no. know of. Yeah, Indian music? Indian, Yeah, Indian music there are. So now that you've finished uh, your graduation, mm -hmm. so what's what's next for you? I'm uh, actually working. So I graduated um, two years ago. It's going to be almost two years now. Okay. And I'm working in San Francisco. Full-time job? Full-time job. So then as far as you're concerned, uh, your education, so to say, is over. Um, no, I want to pursue further studies in a so couple of years. So is that normal out there? Here I know everybody goes for MA and after MA they go for something else. Never-ending students. But yeah, uh, out there, how is it? For, for once, you, once you graduate, you usually work for a couple of years before you do your MBA. And then for law school... So do you school, pay for your own college in, in many ways? Yeah. Um, I did. I tried to pay for as much as, as I could, but Amman Appa obviously helped. Yes, and yes. They no, like to your tuition. next step. You suppose you want to do a master's in something. Yeah, that I'll probably... Depends on where you work too, because sometimes a company will help pay for it. And oh, yeah. All right, so it, it, all that can happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so I, I can I can see uh, why all you people are more uh, what shall I say self assured than uh, so many kids out here. Mm -hmm. Again, like you said, it's because we don't have the mm -hmm. need to go and work and fend for yourself, and you know, dad, mom looks after everything most mm -hmm. of the time. So, anyway, it's lovely having you here. Yes, Seth. thank you. So I do drop in when you. Hit the big time. Yes. Well, I'm not even there, but... Uh, <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.